Hi everyone, it's Ryan with AOCPMR. So today I'm going to do a walkthrough of sacral dysfunctions, just like the video I did with the walkthrough of different anominate dysfunctions. So today I'm going to be using this model and I'm also going to be using a dry erase board because sacrum dysfunctions can get really tricky. So I have a method of solving sacral problems that I used on boards and I think it helped me out a lot. I think it'll help you too. So first, uh, let's talk a little bit about the different motions of the sacrum. So the sacrum is where the spine meets the pelvis and helps with weight transfer to the innominate bones which transfer weight to the legs. The sacrum is able to bend and tilt in several different planes to accommodate several different movements. Sometimes due to trauma or maybe due to abnormal weight bearing for an extended period of time, the sacrum gets stuck in one of these, which we learn about in osteopathic medicine. So basically all a dysfunction is, is a sacrum getting stuck in one of its planes of motion. So there are several types of sacral dysfunction. So I'm gonna take off my anominates here. And I'm going to cover all of the sacral dysfunctions that you will see on your boards and on your testing class, and most of them that you will see in clinic. So my way of solving sacral problems is to think of the sacrum as a 3D model. Some students like to memorize the landmark locations and then the dysfunctions that they indicate, and that works great for some people. I think, um, in my opinion, it's much better just to have a comprehensive knowledge of the sacrum and the different axes and think of the sacrum as a 3D model. And that will stick with you better as well in the long term. So uh, some questions as far as the sacrum goes, some questions will give you the landmarks. Okay, so this is the sacral sulci is like this or the ILA is like this and they'll want you to know the diagnosis and some will give you the diagnosis and want to know the landmarks. So first let's talk a little bit about our landmark anatomy. For sacral, this function. The most important is the sacral sulci, which are right here, and the inferior lateral angles, which are right here. See how these are two very sharp angles over here? And then you have the two sulci right here. So all you have to do to find the sacral sulci is you find the PSIS on someone's sacrum. So here, I'll put this back on for a sec just to show you what I mean. Oops, backwards. So all you have to do to find someone's sacral sulci is find the ILA, and then you just step down from the ILA. So ILA, step down, that's, that's where your sacral sulci is. So when describing dysfunction in the sacrum, you're always talking about the top of the dysfunction right here. So if, it's, if the sacrum is anterior or posteriorly rotated, this is the part of the sacrum you're talking about. So that's easy to get confused because if this side's doing one thing, the other side's doing another thing. So always remember that the top of the sacrum is what we're talking about. If the sacrum is flexing, extending. So in order to palpate the ILA, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll just palpate, use the heel of your hand, palpate down the sacrum, kind of find the end of the sacrum where it drops off there, and then you just go out to the side, and that's where you have your ILA. All right, so the last important landmark is the L5 vertebrae, which we're gonna cover in a second. So the L5 plays into sac uh, sacral dysfunctions, this is really important, but I will and I promise I will cover that later. So I'm gonna start with a quick overview of the dysfunctions. So the sacrum can be stuck against the anominates on the right side, the left side, bilaterally, or unilaterally. So I'll start with the left and right dysfunctions, and I will cover the bilateral and unilateral in a minute. So sacral dysfunctions are named by the pathologic axis that they are stuck on, either left or right. You can think of the dysfunctional axis as either running through the right side or through the left side of the superior portion of the sacrum. So just for visual sake, if, a, if the sacrum is stuck on a right axis, the axis will be coming through here, as if the sacrum is, is actually rotating is the pathologic axis. So this is not normal or healthy. So if the sacrum is stuck on that axis right there, that is not what we're, that's not normal motion for the sacrum. So, and the opposite of that would be you being stuck on the left axis, which sacrum rotating along those, those lines. So just think of a pencil or a pen or a stick just going through that side of the sacrum. And that is what an axis is. So I've drawn it here as well. So a left axis, this is how I draw sacrum when I'm working sacral problems. So the left axis goes on the left side and the right axis grows out on the top of the right side of the sacrum. Uh, it's really basic, but really important. So rotations are described 
by their their axis is always listed second. I'm sure if you've been in osteopathic manipulative medicine principles and practice class, or whatever it's called at your school, they will always say uh, rotated right on the left axis or rotated left on the left axis. So, so L on L or uh, right on right. The second letter that we're talking about is the axis. So we can either have an axis here, here, but the rotation is which way this, the sacrum is actually rotating, just like a vertebrae. So if the sacrum is rotating to the right, just gonna be rotated this way. So the sacrum can be rotated right on a right axis, or the sacrum can be rotated left on a right axis. So now we're gonna start with the anterior rotations of the sacrum. So the anterior are much more common and the posterior are a little more rare and they're usually more painful as well. So that's kind of a clinical pearl. If so someone comes into the clinic and they're just like, their sacrum's killing them, think more along the lines of a posterior, or a posterior rotation. Okay, so I've written them down here because I hope this makes things clear. clearer. Um, so the anterior rotations, you can remember them as left on left and right on right. So pretty easy, just remember that the letters are the same. All right, so left on left axis, remember? Axis is going out the left side and it's rotated to the left. So this makes this landmark shallow and this landmark shallow and this landmark deep and this landmark deep. So both of the sacral sulci are, or excuse me, the left sacral sulci is shallow, the left ILA is shallow, and the right sacral sulci is deep, and the left sacral sulci is deep. So another way they might notate this, and this is something that they try and do to trick you, is they might say anterior or posterior. Just think of that in relative terms of the body. If it's posterior, that, that means it's shallow, so P is equivalent to S, essentially. Or deep can mean anterior, so that means it's closer to the anterior side of the body. So, and the right on right is just the exact opposite of that. So, you have a right axis, sacrum's rotated to the right, shallow sacral sulci on this side, shallow ILA on this side, deep sacral sulci on this side, and deep ILA on this side. All right, now onto the posterior rotations. So, these are called posterior rotations because you can think of them of rotating posteriorly along an axis. So where the anterior rotations were more like this, these ones are rotated posteriorly. Okay, so our first dysfunction is called a left on right. So axis is on the right and it is rotated to the left. So rotated posteriorly along that axis, which is gonna give you shallow landmarks here and deep landmarks on this, on this side. And then we have the exact opposite of that, which is a right on left dysfunction. So axis is on the left side rotated to the right, you have deep landmarks on this side and shallow landmarks on this side. So to recap, we want to start with the axis, think which way the sacrum's rotated, and think about what that would do to the different landmarks. So for example, let's say that a, que a question tells you that the sacrum is left on left. So left on left, meaning that it is on a left axis, so we think of the axis going through this side of the sacrum and that the sacrum is physically rotated to the left. So that means that the landmarks on the sacrum are going to be superior on this side of the sacrum. So this side is going to be shallow, this sacral sulcus is going to be shallow, this sacral sulcus is going to be deep, this sacral sulcus is going to be deep as well. And this sacral sulcus, or this ILA, will be, sh will be shallow, will be able to be palpable on this side. So a lot of times people will do this, so left, left on left axis, they'll put that it'll be shallow here, deep here, and so ILA will be shallow over here. Okay, real quick, I wanna talk about sacrotuberous ligaments. Sometimes a board question will say that the sacrotuberous ligament is tight on one side or sacrotuberous ligament is loose on one side. And so all this means in factoring this into your diagnosis of the sacrum, is if that ILA is shallow or posterior, means the same thing, that the sacrotuberous ligament is gonna be tight on that side. And if it is loose, that means that it's going to be sh deep on that side. So that just tells you where the ILA is. 
So it'll give you different pieces of the puzzle and it'll expect you to put them all together. That's very common with board questions. So time to talk how L5 fits into the sacrum puzzle here. So the major lot, so L5, you know, vertebrae sits on top of the sacrum. So L5, the two laws are L5 will rotate opposite of what the sacrum does and it will side bend to the same side as the axis of the sacrum. Okay, so I have two examples here because that's a little bit vague with if you don't have it in context. So on a left on left, so left axis, so on this side, rotated to the left, L5 will be side bent to the left and rotated to the right. So kind of like this. I think of this as a pinch. So notice how I have these two axes drawn, that, that it will always pinch the two axes of the vertebrae. This, the side bending side of L5 and the axis will always pinch each other. Because if you've ever had one of these uh, dysfunctions, it does feel like a pinch, like something is pinching in there and patients will actually say that. So that helps me put it in context. Okay, so right here we have a posterior dysfunction. So axis is on the right side, rotated to the left. So for that, we're going to be side bent to the right and then rotated to the right. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some of these weird sacral dysfunctions. They're pretty straightforward. So a bilateral flexion, you have the sacral base is bilaterally flexed between the two innominate bones. So you have deep sacral sulci bilaterally. And then the bilateral extension is the exact opposite of that, that both of the sacral sulci are shallow bilaterally. So the unilateral dysfunctions are basically a dysfunction that doesn't fit in with the other dysfunctions that we've already covered. So a unilateral flexion or extension will just be one sacral sulci, either flexed or extended, either on the right or the left side of the sacrum. So you might wonder, how does L5 fit in with these dysfunctions? And the short answer is, don't worry about it. So these dysfunctions aren't very high yield for complex in the first place. There's not a clear consensus on the behavior of L5 with these dysfunctions. So for now, do not worry about that. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about the different types of sacral testing. Boil these down to about as much as they can possibly be boiled down. So a seated flexion test is the most common and it's kind of your bread and butter sacral test. So what happens is you have your patient sit down in front of you and you have them bend forward. And so this locks out the innominates. So you're not testing the innominates. This actually tests which side the sacrum is catching on which innominant. So as the patient bends forward, that innominate will go forward. And whatever innominate goes forward, your axis is opposite of that side. So for instance, if someone, you have someone sit down in front of you and you haven't been forward and their PSIS goes way further on the right, it just means your axis is on the left. So the spring test is it's really easy to overcomplicate it, but the spring test is positive if there is no springing. So that's very important. So spring test is positive if there is no springing. And all you do with the spring test is you basically put your heel of your hand onto the, the base of their sacrum and you push down. And if this patient has a posterior rotation, the sacrum will not spring, which means that it's stuck backwards. So if this sacrum is rotated anteriorly, then it will spring just fine. But if it's stuck posteriorly, it will not spring, which will give you a positive spring test. All right, so the last one is the Sphinx test. So the Sphinx test, you actually have the patient uh, lay down flat uh, prone, and then you have them get up on their hands and knees. So kind of like a Sphinx, thus the name. And you check to see if the two landmarks are get more symmetrical when they when they do the sphinx test. So the sphinx test will actually flex the tip. Of the if the landmarks get more symmetrical during the sphinx test, that means that you have an anterior dysfunction. So I'm going to put all this together now. I have a, I have a cool flow chart. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to draw. To diagnose the sacrum, a lot of times board questions will give you these and this 
shows that if you have a positive seated flexion test, you're either going to have an anterior, a posterior, and a sacral dysfunction. So from there, the two special tests that they might give you would be a sphinx test or a spring test. So if the sphinx test is positive, that means you have an anterior rotation. So a left on left or a right on right. If the sphinx test is negative, that means you have a posterior rotation. So right on left or left on right. The spring test is positive, that means that you have a posterior rotation. And if the spring test is negative, that means you have an anterior rotation. If the seated flexion test is negative, that means that you have a weird dysfunction or no dysfunction. We're gonna put it all together now and we're gonna do a practice uh, boards question. So say a, a patient presents to the clinic complaining of lower back pain and you suspect an osteopathic sacral dysfunction. Seated flexion test, so this is how I like to work through problems. I like to just draw a little sacrum. So seated flexion test is positive on the left. Spring test is positive. And left sulci is posterior. Remember, that could also mean shallow. They use those two interchangeably. So what is the most likely diagnosis? All right, so go ahead, pause the video, and when you have the answer, go ahead and play. Okay, so the answer is left on right. So, let me put this cap on so I can use it as an axis. So, remember the flowchart, and remember what we talked about earlier about thinking of the sacrum as a 3D model in your head. So, axis is on the right side because the seated flexion test was positive on the left. So axis is always opposite of the seated flexion test. So that's our axis, right. So they mentioned that the sulci on the left is shallow or posterior, which we can think of as being rotating like this. So you have the axis like this and the sacrum would be rotated back on that axis. This is even more information than we need necessarily with the spring test being positive on, the spring test being positive, which lets you know that this is a posterior dysfunction in the right on right R. So once you break it down like that, it makes the questions much, much easier. All right, so a follow-up question. This is something very common that I love to do on boards. You'll have a question stack and the next one will be, okay, so with that being said, what is the diagnosis of L5? So go ahead and pause the video again. So the diagnosis for L5 on this is side bent right, rotated right. Remember that's either gonna be an extension or a flexion component in there as well. I did not give you enough information to solve that, so just know that it'll be a type two. So the axis, remember, pinches on the same side that the sacrum is rotating on, and it rotates opposite of the way that the sacrum is rotating, which all should fit together nicely with the notation. All right, so, uh, final word, there are other sacral dysfunctions that do not fit in with these rules that they are listed and that are listed in Savarese. So these are very rare and they're very confusing. And so they are beyond the scope of this video. So knowing the ones we talked about will get you through com uh, Comlex Level 1 and Comlex Level 2. And so that's our video, and I hope that was helpful. helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more OMM videos. Uh, comment below if there are any other OMM concepts that you would like to see walkthroughs on.